highly anticipated evolution, highly anticipated evolution and germ theory leads to self-destruction nihilism by Joey coming soon to a theatre near you. Yeah, more nonsense, I suspect. Heavy nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Still haven't watched it. Absolute nonsense it will be. Yeah. See, I, I reject both theories completely because yeah. neither of them, both of them are basically, you know, very narrow in their thing. It's a bit like the oncogenes and the um, mitochondrial and the mitochondrial disease. Yeah. It's an interplay between yeah. the the cell and the mitochondria. You know, there's this delusion that these things just work separately. They don't. It's the same thing with your gut and your your own your own body inside. The own bo- your own body inside um, is interacting with germs, and germs can be pathogenic, any type of germ, pathogenic, neutral, just hitching a ride, or can be beneficial to an organism. That means. Um, coexistence and listen and the body won't fight it because it considers it having a beneficial role so there's a lot of nuancing of that these sort of narrow ways these theories work every every germ needs to be knocked out with um knocked out is illogical but on the other hand it doesn't mean that things like measles tuberculosis and things like that don't kill they definitely do kill many people and even tribal people have died being exposed to these things. North American Plain Indians also had exposures to these things, and a number of them died. The ones that were further away and had less exposure to the viral load had secondary um, exposure. Because of their good diet, animal-based diet, they were more robust but also they were getting a lower viral load. They were in an environment with a lower viral load coming back one or two people. And so they didn't have as many losses. So if the germ theory was, you know, so if germs that can't kill was, you know, um, a, a falsehood like the other crowd um, uh, promotes, the terrain crowd, it's all kumbaya symbiosis, then there should have never been anyone that died from bacteria um or any of the other stuff if they were on a species appropriate diet that wasn't the case the mongol hordes um, when they attacked um uh, middle east and europe and all that a number of their people died from certain diseases and they were pastoralists and you know very much you could say animal based so some of them not many compared to the others but still they had some losses um, uh, amongst their their forces their troops so to say that a species appropriate diet is going to protect you from every single disease on the planet. That's just absolute nonsense. Good vitamin D status, a good taurine status and all that means that you're going to be far more robust. You're going to reduce. See, what they couldn't do that back then. We can. That's the difference. I can maintain, somebody that lives in Mongolia may will always have a slightly lower vitamin D. Until you get to the modern era where you've got vitamin D tablets, you can take and bring it up to the levels of people in the tropics. That's why people in the tropics can put up and persist with far more diseases because the majority are tropical diseases. Why? Again, and it's only the uh, being on agricultural food, which they are in the tropics, which makes them vulnerable over time. So that's the other thing. But when it comes to, you know, for us, modern era, we know that quite clearly from research that uh, that the immune system when it fights off pathogens what happens to the immune system it becomes aged immunosenescence it's called when they were coming up with these theories in the past they had no idea about immunosenescence okay which is very critical Harry <laughs> here's something for you don't know if I mentioned this before but I actually had, uh, still have, because you can get rid of it easily, but I did have uh, toxoplasmosis yep. active, and I still have the antibodies for it. So, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. that's, that's something to consider, I guess. Yeah, 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 precisely. I mean, 
I I had um, a really bad uh, malarial dengue fever. I don't know because I didn't get it like, diagnosed mm-hmm. at, the, at the time, and I was knocked out for days. I was so bad, bedridden for days. I survived it, um, and after that, I've noticed that I've been in malaria and dengue type environments, and I'm far more robust. Obviously, the diet's better, but I'm sort of far more robust. But if I'm in those areas, the first thing that I do is, obviously, vitamin D I don't have to worry about. But I do have to definitely um, deal with other things. And that's, you know, um, uh, the uh, making sure that I take my, my powder of taurine with me for to protect my immune system from immunosenescence. That's the <clears throat> sorry. That's the critical part of uh, the other leg in the thing. So vitamin D obviously will help with new stem cells, so new um, uh, naive T cells and other and other and other. Well, it won't only produce naive T cells; it will produce other um, uh, parts of the immune system as well. The uh, naive T cells are very important. The reason I mention them is like. They play an important role in dealing with new dis- with diseases. So younger people that have got more naive T cells in their thymus tend to be more robust when it comes to um, disease. Like when they're very young, they don't have as many. And as they grow and their thymus grows into their teenage years, their thymus becomes bigger and the amount of naive T cells they have in there are much greater in, in, in numbers. So that gives them greater robustness. If they survive childhood, they are much stronger after that. And their T cells have also been trained um, by, you know, having to deal with a lot of different things in the environment and become more um, better um, at doing their job. And then on top of that, as we get old, uh, we end up with more cytokine T cells because our T cells become more aged, more damaged, more um, compromised. And those cytokine ones, when they do respond, if they're not regulated by vitamin D, then they can kill. It's called a cytokine storm. But if you can actually use things like taurine that causes apoptosis and gets rid of these cytokine T cells and lower the threshold and then produce, because it, taurine is also required not only for the immune to protect the immune system from senescence, but also goes into the thymus, prevents remodeling of the thymus. That means a shrinking of the thymus as you get old, like the heart, it prevents it from remodeling from excessive exercise. Does the same thing with a lot of things. It's, as I said, a great regulator. It's a master regulator, which is what I've been trying to push across for some time now. And in the thymus, it also plays a role in the activation of these naive T cells. So you end up with more naive T cells and less damaged um, immune cells overall, and that's going to make a big, big difference. 